Right, something else you need to understand is that follow and no follow. By default, websites generally are uh, follow in terms of links, but um, a lot of websites will implement what's called a no follow system. This can be done at uh, a page level or an individual link level. And uh, the important thing to realize is that if you've put a link on, on a website that points back to your website, if it's an, a no follow system in place, then basically there's no link juice going to be passed to your website. So basically, um, in terms of website promotion as such, there's very little benefit, if any, to be had from that. Um, what you can do is uh, go to um, someone else's website uh, on the linking page, and uh, if you just right click and view the source code, if you just search for the words no follow or, or something like that, then um, if they've got a no follow policy, you, you should see that uh, displayed. So for instance, um, People like uh, YouTube is a good example of a site that has um, allows you to put links on there, but there are no follow links. So it means that people can click on those links and they can follow back to um, your particular website if you've got a, a, a link pointing back to you. But it basically means that in terms of uh, link choose, there's going to be no flow from YouTube. Right, sometimes in the head section of the, the website, you'll see um, basically a piece of code looking something like this. Whoops something like this and uh, this is basically telling the the robots the, the Google bots to uh, not index and not follow that particular page you can have not index on its own or no follow on its own um, and uh, as I say in this particular case this is basically saying to the search engines that you want a no follow policy on the whole page so if you've got a page full of uh, links um, within that page then this probably be a good idea to have it because uh, if you don't have this and you have loads and loads of links on a particular page, all that means is the link juice is flowing from your website to somebody else's website, which is not really what you want. Um, in some cases, that you know you might want that, but in most cases, um, you want to basically hoard the link juice and uh, keep it on your own site. So I say this is basically implementing no follow at a page level. Sometimes you might want to um, have a mixture of links on your um, particular page. Maybe you might have some links which are going to maybe other websites that you own, so you want the, um, the link juice to flow to them, but you might have other links that uh, are not necessarily going to competitor sites, but just to any site, maybe an informational site or something, or a, an industry site. And again, you don't really want to be wasting the link juice on those. So as you can see, in this particular case, we've got this um, code here, which um, goes in the, um, the, the link itself, so you put rel equals and then inverted commas no follow and uh, basically that means for that particular link the link juice will not be passed in this case to www.example.com uh, right getting listed locally um, search the web for many localization and many local organizations as possible contact them and ask them to do a link to your website so these could be uh, ideally related to your particular industry or they could just simply be local um, websites that um, deal with your particular area so for instance if you're a plumber and there was um, a local website with details about your city or your suburb or whatever uh, again you might ask them to include a link to you um, don't ask don't get just give it a try right pay directories why use pay directories uh, when you start looking around the web there are so many places you can actually put links in there back to yourself you might think well why on earth would I possibly pay to have a link in a directory well basically some paid directories are better than others so uh, there are some paid directories like for instance business.com best of the web um, Yahoo directory um, these can charge you quite a bit of money for a listing and um, what you're buying is not well supposedly what you're buying is not um, a link to boost your um, SEO or your page rank. What you're buying is basically, um, or what you're paying for is a review of your website and um, providing it passes the review, a listing within their particular websites. Now, the reason this is important is that um, Google will actually pay attention to some of these. So for instance, uh, if Google thinks you've paid a fair amount of money to, for instance, business.com or best of the web and other similar um, quality directories, then basically it's going to take the view that you know you're not a fly by night company. Um, if you paid that sort of money, then chances are you're a bit more serious. So it, it's kind of 
in indication of quality in a way to Google. So all things being equal, you'll probably find that if you um, join a couple of these, as I say, the important ones would be things like um, Yahoo Directory, uh, Business.com, and uh, Best of the Web. Um, if you certainly join those three, then you should find that all other things being equal, that should um, up your page rank maybe and up your visibility. So definitely worth thinking about doing. As I say, you do need to be careful about which directories you're signing up for. Um, basically, go and look at the home page of each one of these directories in turn. And uh, if the home page is zero or one, forget it, it's a waste of time. If, on the other hand, then you know these directories are you know, six, seven, eight sort of page ranks, then it's definitely worth seeing if you can get listed in them and uh, basically paying them the money. Um, in a lot of cases, it's going to cost quite a bit. So, for instance, in, in the case of Yahoo, um, that will cost you about 299 for the initial uh, review and what have you, and then it will cost you a further um, 299 each year to maintain that listing. And as I said, the idea is that, in theory at least, you're not paying for um, the link itself, you're paying for the review and to have that maintained within their directory. Business.com is another example that will cost you around about $299 a year. And uh, again, you can just simply go to business.com and uh, find information how to, uh, about how to do that. Um, basically, you just uh, submit your websites, give them a fairly brief information and, and uh, pay them the money and off you go. Best of the Web um, is founded way back in 1994, which is pretty early on. has a nice high page rank, and uh, it's actually cheaper than the others. So if you um, you want to um, register it on a year-by-year -year basis, it'll be around about 150 bucks, or uh, I believe for about $300 you can have a one-off payment. And uh, again, definitely worth thinking about. If we go to the Best of the Web, just an example of one of these directories. As you can see, it looks a little bit sparse here. You can basically type in there and do a search for, um, you know, see if any of your competitors are in there. And if you want to, you just click on the submit a site. And basically you've got various options you can, you can use. Select the option you want, so investigate the prices, see if you think it's a good deal. And uh, if so, just simply get yourself listed. Right, using Google Alerts as a link tool, um, you can sign up for Google Alerts, which is another free service from Google. And the basic idea of Google Alerts is that you tell Google what sort of things you're interested in, you know, particular areas, companies, whatever. And um, when there are changes or new information available, Google will send you an email about um, you know, what's changed or something that interests you. So, uh, for instance, um, when people um, blog about your company or associated keywords, you can get an alert. You can then go to a particular blog and if people ask questions, you can answer questions, or in turn you can, you can ask questions. And uh, in many cases, you might find that a bit like some of these blogs might have a, um, a follow through policy on links, in which case you just gain some more links. So just another idea for links. Open Website Explorer this is a great uh, tool for investigating uh, competing websites and basically seeing what sort of um, links other people have. Just quickly fire it up. Again, you should go and explore this yourself really if, if uh, this one's of interest to you. It's um, www.opensitexplorer.org. And uh, basically, you can just um, type in something here such as uh, ccdglobal.com, which is one of our sites. And basically, that'll give you a fair amount of information about this and also uh, related uh, websites. So again, go, go and explore that one. Um, you'll find there's loads and loads of similar tools available. Majestic SEO is yet another one. Now, quality links. Quality links is what you really need. And um, things like uh, .gov and .eu, these are either government or educational uh, website extensions. These are quite hard to get links from. You can't just simply say, hey, you can have some links or you know, buy the links from there. It's just not going to work. So really you should try and put some time in to um, try and get a link from these sort of sites if possible. Um, as I say, .gov or .eu, uh, they tend to be more tightly controlled. Um, you could, no one can just simply say, oh, it's like a .gov extension. You have to prove that it's a government um, website. In the same way, the EDU websites generally, um, you have to actually be an educational institution and uh, they tend to have strict rules and guidelines about external linking. Um, so as I say, if you can get a link from these sort of uh, domains, then so much the better. 
Right, article submission sites. Um, it says there are numerous sites that accept quality articles. The keyword there is quality, uh, and you sh should basically consider signing up to these. The, um, the idea is that you basically write an article. It doesn't have to be a huge thesis. It can just be a page or half a page. It, it's basically it's quality rather than quantity. Um, it should also be unique. What article submission don't like is you submitting uh, the same article to dozens and dozens of different sites. They all like, um, in fact, they all demand, by and large, uh, unique quality content. So submitting duplicate content across the board is something that um, will be frowned upon. Uh, plus the fact that um, if you've got duplicate content that's picked up by Google again, you're going to be defeating the whole object of the exercise, really. Um, as you can see, as it says here, by, uh, by and large, in most cases, keep the articles free of shameless plugs for your product or service. Quite often with um, article submission sites, there's an area where you can um, post your particular um, submission, your, your article, and then quite often there's an area underneath where you can have like link back details about you, about the company, etc. And um, by and large, if you play by the rules, everything's fine. If you start just submitting low quality articles or articles that are just full of shameless plugs um, for your own product or service, uh, they'll either be rejected or um, failing that no one's going to read them. Um, so as always, only register with high quality sites of a high page rank.